Hello and welcome to Neutrino Channel. As you probably know there is a lot of talk about the possible use of tactical nukes in Ukraine by Russians to hit Ukrainians with electromagnetic pulse, EMP, as propagated in a Financial Times article. However, the localized or tactical EMP strike as presented there is a physical impossibility. Let's dive into the matter and explain why using a tactical nuke on the battlefield to hit an enemy with an EMP is nonsensical. If you're close enough to a near-surface nuclear burst to worry about its EMP, you're probably going to be killed by something else, but there are exceptions. While every nuclear explosion produces an electromagnetic pulse of some kind, not every nuclear EMP is a militarily significant effect. There's a lot of confusion surrounding EMP. One reason for this is that there are multiple different kinds of nuclear EMP, and these are different phenomena with distinct underlying mechanisms. The type of EMP that dominates in the public imagination is high-altitude EMP, hemp. This is the one that can, in theory, damage electronics over huge areas. But high-altitude EMP is really several distinct phenomena that operate on different timescales ranging from a few nanoseconds to hundreds of seconds. Moreover, the physics behind high-altitude EMP depend upon the nuclear burst occurring at high altitude. It needs to be at a minimum of 30 kilometers above the surface and generally much higher for a strong effect. You cannot create a local version of the high-altitude EMP by lowering the burst height below 30 kilometers. Players in war games often want to do this, but down in a thicker atmosphere one gets a different, weaker EMP that doesn't cause strong effects on the surface. So the Russians couldn't, say, detonate a nuclear weapon at an altitude of 15 or 20 kilometers to create a powerful high-altitude EMP that impacted a well-defined area, like a single Ukrainian city. The underlying physics forbids it. At lower altitudes, the kind of nuclear EMP we need to worry about is source region EMP, SREMP. Unlike hemp, which we don't understand completely because only a few high-altitude nuclear tests were ever conducted, we have lots of experience with SREMP from hundreds of near-surface atmospheric nuclear tests. In the 1950s SREMP, then sometimes called radio flash, was regarded as an annoyance that interfered with test instrumentation rather than something the military had to worry about hinting at its limited significance for battlefield nuclear use. SREMP stems from the gamma radiation from the nuclear explosion, which knocks electrons out of atoms in the surrounding air. Since those electrons travel away from the center of the burst, they produce an effective current. The area in which the gamma radiation gets absorbed and these electrons are produced is the source region, that gives SREMP its name. Electric field strengths inside the source region are immense much higher than one would expect on the surface from hemp. But anything in the source region is getting cooked by the same gamma radiation driving the EMP effect, and will probably be destroyed by other effects such as blast. As a consequence, analysts during the Cold War mostly thought of SREMP as a concern for hardened facilities, such as ICBM silos, that were designed to survive the other effects of a nearby nuclear explosion. But SREMP can cause some effects outside the source region. If the burst occurs near the ground, the source region is asymmetrical, and this results in a radiated signal as well as powerful ground currents. The radiated signal from SREMP in a near-surface burst can be significant, but it falls off rapidly with distance from the source region, so it's still a localized effect. Another way that SREMP can cause damage outside of the source region is if something conducts the induced currents out like wires or cables. Since the SREMP effect occurs very quickly, faster than the blast wave propagates, Power lines or other conductors can convey the induced currents out of the source region before those conductors get destroyed by other effects of the nuclear blast. These currents could then damage equipment connected to those conductors at appreciable distances from the nuclear burst, tens of kilometers. Even accounting for these possibilities, the likely consequences of SREMP in places that won't be devastated by other nuclear weapons effects are relatively modest as this 2021 study from Sandia National Lab attests. It finds that the range at which SREMP might cause permanent failure to some electronics is smaller than the radius devastated by blasts for nuclear explosions of most yields. Hardly the apocalyptic effects sometimes envisioned for EMP. The exception is the smallest weapons, less than a kiloton.
This is because of how radiation and blast effects scale differently with yield. Even so, the expected SREMP effects outside the blast radius are still pretty modest. To sum up, nuclear EMP effects are likely to be a secondary concern in the event of battlefield nuclear use compared to other effects such as blast and radiation. We can't dismiss EMP altogether, but we have good reason to expect it'll be one of our lesser problems. Thank you for your attention, and see you next time.